Welcome to my course on Genome Editing and Engineering. We are discussing Module 12 and in this lecture number 2 we will be discussing about the regulatory issues in genome uh, editing. We have discussed about the various ethical concerns. So, uh, there is a need for regulation to take care of many of those uh, critical issues. What do you mean by regulations? Uh, in general, regulations are a set of rules or directives made and maintained by an authority. Dictionary uh, meaning of regulation uh, is uh, presented as a law, rule or order prescribed by an authority to regulate conduct. Organizations may use its authority to regulate or conduct uh, the uh, activities. A regulation in its uh, broadest definition is often equated with uh, government. Government regulation or public regulation refers to the implementation of rules by government agencies that is uh, backed up by uh, legal instruments. Regulation uh, is basically the employment of uh, the legal instruments for the implementation of social, economic policy objectives. Uh, common may implement economic and social regulations in order to realize socio-economic or moral ethical uh, goals, etc. In biotechnology, uh, the regulatory body is an autonomous and statutory agency to regulate the research, uh, transport, import and manufacture of uh, biotechnology products and uh, organisms. From the mid and late 1970s and through the 1980s and 90s, new biotechnology development uh, has been a subject of debate and regulation is most in most industrialized uh, nations. Environmental health, societal and ethical consequences have been on the political agenda nationally and internationally with debates being triggered by the first successful gene transfers in 73 and 74. However, too much regulation beyond the requirement may play spoil sport such as the assumed negative impacts of regulation on innovation and economic growth in economies of innovation and in industrialized uh, uh, policy. The inhibiting consequences of public debate and critique uh, assumed by uh, industrial uh, strategies. So, this is a picture obtained from the website of uh, Gordon uh, Research uh, Conference. Uh, this conference being listed as a conference on uh, nucleic acids uh, held in June 1973. It was a public event where discussions regarding the safety and risks of RDNA research was uh, initiated. Uh, attendees of this uh, uh, conference, um, mostly scientists, uh, were concerned that unaffected pursuit of this research uh, might engender unforeseen and damaging consequences for human health and arts ecosystem. Uh, they wrote a letter to National Academy of Sciences, uh, United States and in response to this, NAS uh, convened a committee to evaluate the safety of research of uh, recombinant DNA. And uh, the members of this uh, committee uh, as uh, obtained uh, from the journal Science uh, 26 article uh, is Paul Burke, one of the pioneers of the recombinant DNA technology, uh, David Baltimore. Uh, Herbert Boyer, Stanley Cohen, uh, Ronald Davis, David Hognes, Daniel Nathans, Richard Boblin, James D. Watson, Sherman uh, Wiseman, Norton D. Ginder. So, this is the Committee on Recombinant DNA Molecules Assembly of Life Sciences, National Research Council, National Academy of Sciences, uh, Washington uh, DC. Uh, the committee published its uh, recommendations in two journals, namely Nature and Science in 19. Uh, 74 and calling for a voluntary uh, moratorium on recombinant DNA experiments while questions of public safety were uh, further evaluated and the name of these article in the science is the potential biohazards of recombinant uh, DNA molecules and you can see uh, in the authors list the name of the committee members constituted by NAS. Uh, in this uh, letter, uh, they invited the National Institute of Health to establish a committee to oversee an evaluation of potential biological and ecological hazards uh, and to devise guidelines for working with recombinant DNA. Uh, these and many conversations and discussions resulted in a call for a public moratorium on any further re RDNA research. Uh, the objective of the moratorium was to ensure that research scientists could learn uh, more about uh, gene splicing uh, or editing uh, and gene transfer. The 1975 uh, uh, ACLMO conference about which we have discussed in the 
last lecture uh, brought together leading researchers and governmental regulators to engage in full and open discussions. The focus of this SLMO conference was to discuss the risks, safety and any potential liabilities of the research about which you are already aware, the conditions needed to ensure that these were adequately addressed and what precautions could, would be necessary to end the moratorium allowing uh, genetic modification research uh, to proceed. With the world's leading RDNA recombinant DNA research experts in presence, the SLMO conference was able to uh, develop safe research guidelines and practices themselves rather than having them imposed by uh, government agencies. The participation of officials of the U.S. National Institute of Health enhanced the transparency for scientific and uh, public scrutiny, uh, however. Appropriate steps were uh, taken to ensure the prevention of any risks regarding containment standards for virus and bacteria research that could potentially harm humans if widespread exposure occurred. Knowledge about the application of recombinant DNA research grew rapidly, moving from the initial bacterial research uh, in the mid 70s to plants in the early 1980s. In 83, the Miami Winter Symposium on the Molecular Genetics of Plant was held and was uh, sharing of uh, knowledge uh, about applying gene technology uh, to agriculture with no discussions about the potential risks of GM plants or about how to regulate uh, the technology. So, this is a brief uh, timeline on the governance uh, on or for uh, biotechnology. Uh, you can see uh, in 1972, the first uh, patent on a live organisms uh, was awarded to uh, Chakraborty. And then in 1975, uh, the international conference in uh, RDNA uh, recombinant DNA molecules was held. Prior to that, uh, the Gordon Research uh, Conference was held uh, as we have already uh, just discussed. And then by 78, there was a proposal for a council directive establishing sec safety of uh, uh, recombinant uh, DNA. And uh, in the years uh, 81 to 83, there were many uh, activities uh, in 81 biotechnology a development plan for Canada uh, genetic engineering safety aspect of RDNA work was established biotechnology international trends and perspectives in 82 then uh, 83 the national biotechnology strategy Miami winter symposium here the risk assessment in the federal government was uh, developed then 85 we can see the development of industrial biotechnology in Europe and uh, 86, the recombinant DNA safety considerations, coordinated framework for regulation of biotechnology and transgenic tobacco field trials in the US uh, took place. Uh, after two years in 88, there was a CARC workshop, uh, new developments in uh, biotechnology and uh, field testing of GMOs occurred in 89. Then there are several directives issued in 1990, uh, 9219 EEC and 9220 EEC. And in 1992, statement of policy foods uh, derived from new plant varieties and safety considerations for biotechnology were uh, coming up and uh, flavor saver uh, tomato was approved uh, in the uh, USA. In 1993, there was uh, the safety evaluation of foods derived by modern biotechnology and safety considerations for biotechnology scale up and traditional crop breeding uh, practices and uh, the Argentinian uh, canola uh, case uh, came up and uh, there was a approval uh, in the CDN in 1994 and in 1998 uh, the directive number 98 oblique 44 by uh, EC uh, was uh, issued. So, this is in brief uh, about the various uh, events that uh, occurred uh, regarding the governance of uh, timeline for uh, biotechnology. Let us now look into the brief history of international regulations of genetically modified organism research and development. In 1971, the first debate over the risks of humans to exposure of genetically modified organisms began when a common intestinal microorganism E. coli was infected with DNA from a tumor inducing virus. People working with GMOs in laboratories and adjacent residents were first concerned about safety risks later on through controversy. Uh, though controversy developed due to worries that recombinant organisms might be used uh, into uh, biological weapons. The National Institutes of Health established the Recombinant DNA Advisory Committee in 1974 to start addressing some of these challenges as a result of the expanding discussion which was initially limited to scientists but soon reached the uh, general public. 
in the 1980s there were hardly any laws existing in, uh, in US or even the world uh, when deliberate release of genetically modified organisms into the environment started to happen. Industry was only required to voluntarily follow the NIS recommendations in the United States. The development of novel drugs using transgenic plants was another worthwhile activity in the 80s and businesses, organizations and even nations started to see biotechnology as a viable source of income. The global commercialization of biotech products has sparked, sparked fresh discussions on a variety of topics including the patentability of living organisms, the dangers of recombinant protein exposure, concerns about privacy, the ethics and reliability of scientists and the role of government in regulating science, the Congressional Office of Technology Assessment. Efforts originated in the United States and were eventually adopted globally as a top-down method of counseling politicians by predicting the social effects of genetically modified uh, organisms. The first intergovernmental paper to address concerns over the use of GMOs was recombinant DNA safety considerations uh, uh, published by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. The report uh, suggested carrying out risk analysis on a case-by-case -case basis. Since then the case by case method to assess the risks of genetically modified goods has gained widespread acceptance and nevertheless the US has typically adopted a product based approach whereas the European uh, approach is more uh, process based. Although adequate regulation was absent in many nations in the past, governments worldwide are now enacting stronger testing and leveling rules uh, for genetically modified crops in response to public uh, popular demand. Uh, this is a evolving landscape around genome editing uh, regulations in agriculture. So, you can see the green uh, uh, countries are the ones where genome edited crops are not regulated as genetically modified organisms as for example, Canada, then Colombia, Brazil, uh, Argentina and Chile where case by case if no foreign DNA uh, then not regulated as uh, GMO. So, uh, in, in gene, gene editing, uh, we may uh, simply edit or delete uh, portions of a gene or we may change uh, the base of a uh, particular uh, protein or a particular uh, gene sequence. So, they do not uh, qualify to be considered as GMO as per this definition in the Latin American countries. In Canada, uh, regulation is not uh, there unless trait is identified as uh, novel and uh, in the United States of America, most uh, non-transgenic plants are uh, not uh, regulated. Uh, there are uh, other countries which are shown by the yellow color where uh, discussions are uh, going on uh, which in include India and Bangladesh. Uh, the GMO definition encompasses genome editing in this case in India and discussion is uh, was going on at the time of the publication of these. Uh, map in 2020 in this uh, particular journal. However, they are a block of countries in Europe which you can see are totally marked in red where genome edited crops are regulated as uh, genetically modified uh, organisms. So, this is a landscape um, overall regarding the uh, regulation of genome uh, editing in agriculture across the globe. Regulation of uh, genome edited plants follow uh, two frameworks. Some countries regulate the process while others regulate characteristics of the final product. While some countries have established biosafety regulations for genome edited plants or declared their deregulation, uh, most uh, countries have not yet established their uh, position. Uh, challenges in regulating plant genome editing includes uh, market access and addressing the societal concerns about its biological safety without limiting development of the technology. Transient free genome edited plants are similar to varieties containing genetic variations created naturally. Therefore, commercialization of genome edited plants or their products might bypass the strict biosafety regulations required for uh, transgenic plants. So, this uh, table lists the regulation of genetically modified and genome edited plants across the globe uh, and you can see the country uh, which are uh, having these genetically uh, modified plants Argentina, Australia, Brazil, uh, Canada, Chile, uh, European Union, uh, India, Japan, Malaysia, Mexico, New Zealand, South Africa, Thailand, United States of uh, America and uh, their uh, 
positioning is different in certain cases it is a case by case basis and mostly non regulated and uh, in many other cases it is uh, uh, regulated or uh, opposed for, exa for example in the European uh, countries. The United States uh, Department of Agriculture declared in March uh, 2018 that genome editing is the equivalent of conventional breeding in some instances and therefore does not require regulatory oversights within the American uh, regulatory framework. A mushroom engineered to resist browning in a waxy corn engineered to contain starch composed exclusively of amylopectin are the first CRISPR edited crops to be approved for commercialization in the USA with no regulations. The decision not to regulate was based on the fact that no foreign DNA was inserted during editing and that the result uh, which was obtained did not involve resistance to pesticides or herbicides. Uh, let us now discuss uh, a little bit in detail about the existing regulations or the development of these uh, regulations in different countries uh, across the globe. Uh, in US, uh, in uh, 1964, uh, declaration of uh, Helsinki, a non-binding codification of various ethical standpoints on human experimentation uh, was uh, issued, uh, but it is only operative when cited in national regulations. US observed it until uh, 2006 when FDA eliminated all references in uh, the national uh, regulations. Now, in 1986, coordinated framework for the regulation of biotechnology outlines the basic federal policy of the agencies involved with reviewing biotechnology research and products. In 1996, the Dicker Weaker Amendment passes, uh, which prevents federal funding for research involving the creation or destruction of human embryos. Uh, in 2012, FDA finalizes a breakthrough therapy designation which expedites the development of drugs intended to treat conditions where preliminary evidence shows substantial improvement over existing therapies. Uh, in 2015, FDA approves Imlizig, a modified herpes of virus used to infect and kill uh, melanoma cells. In uh, the same year, a group of scientists and biotechnologists call for examination of the benefits and risks of germline uh, gene editing. In 2016, GMO Leveling Act was passed, which re uh, required leveling of genetically engineered food products. Uh, it is, however, not yet clear whether gene edited animals would require such a level. In 2017, FDA approved the first directly administered gene therapy, uh, Luxterna, that targets a disease caused by mutations in a specific gene to treat children and adults with inherited uh, vision loss. In 2017, the same year, the National Academy of Sciences releases uh, a report on guidelines for editing the human genome to treat diseases and other applications. Uh, in that report, it concluded that clinical trials could be appropriate under the right conditions, including the need uh, to avert a serious disease or conditions a lack of reasonable alternatives and strict oversight. In 2018, US and 12 other nations including Argentina, Australia, Brazil and Canada uh, issued a joint statement supporting agricultural applications of precision biotechnology stating that governments should avoid arbitrary and unjustifiable distinctions between end products uh, derived from precision biotechnology and similar end products obtained through other production uh, methods. Uh, in 2019, there were three important uh, developments. The first one is that USDA FES proposes new biotechnology framework, a movement of certain genetically engineered organisms also called the secure biotechnology regulations, which reduces the regulatory requirements for organisms that are unlikely to pose risks to other plants. Uh, the second one is over 300 scientists signed a petition calling for the harmonization of US gene edited food regulations asking that gene editing regulations for animals be the same as for uh, crops and food. The third one is the uh, patient's uh, advocacy and the uh, launch by scientists uh, to push uh, a lift on the ban on mitochondrial replacement therapy popularly known as the three parent IVF with recommendations to loosen restrictions on some form of human germline therapy. In uh, 2020, FDA releases guidances on gene uh, therapy product development that encourage the development and approval of multiple treatment uh, to create competitive drug markets and provide 
recommendations to help ensure new products meet the FDA standard for safety and effectiveness. If you look into the uh, regulatory developments in India, in uh, 1989 uh, rules for the manufacture, use, import, export and storage of hazardous microorganisms or genetically engineered microorganisms or cells uh, uh, known as the rules 1989 were finalized which uh, regulate research, development, large scale use and import of genetically engineered organisms and products. In 2000, ethical guidelines on biomedical research involving human subjects uh, was uh, issued which prohibits germline therapy. Uh, uh, the same year, the ethical guidelines uh, on these biomedical research involving human subjects uh, produced by the ICMR restricted studies on somatic cell uh, gene therapy. Uh, such studies are permitted only for the purpose of preventing or treating uh, serious uh, diseases. In 2003, uh, uh, Cartesian protocol uh, was ratified which protects the transport and use of organisms modified by biotechnology. And the same year, the government of India formed the stem cell task force to encourage stem cell research. In 2006, Food, Saf Food Safety and Standards Act of 2006 was enacted which regulates genetically engineered food products and uh, processed food. In 2013, Department of Consumer Affairs stipulated that all genetically modified food shall be labeled uh, as GM, but there has been no en enforcement of the labeling requirement. In 2016, Genetic Engineering Appraisal Committee accepted new guidelines on environmental risk assessment of genetically engineered plants, which uh, provide a more systematic and structured process including public consultation uh, for the first time in the approval process. In 2017, Supreme Court of India issued directives to the Food Safety and Standard Authority of India to frame regulations that would enable approval of genetically engineered uh, food products. In 2019, ICMI issued guidelines to ensure that gene therapies can be introduced in India and clinical trials for gene therapies can be performed in an ethical, scientific and safe manner. It recommends the creation of an independent body of biomedical and gene therapy experts, the Gene Therapy and Advisory and Evaluation Committee uh, to supervise uh, proposed uh, therapies. The products and research using gene editing in India, uh, hemophilia, the first application for a trial of uh, gene therapy for hemophilia, uh, an inherited uh, blood clotting disorder was submitted in 2019. Uh, Institute of Genomics and Integrative Biology, IGIB used CRISPR to develop a cure for sickle cell anemia, a genetic blood disease that is particularly prevalent and devastating to populations in India. The National Center for Cell Sciences developed a mechanism that makes uh, stem cells from older donors more viable for bone marrow transplantation, expanding the donor cohort and thus the breadth of treatment. Alzheimer's uh, disease research uh, has also been accomplished. The NCBS used uh, CRISPR on stem cells to study a gene linked to Alzheimer's disease. Institute of Stem Cell Biology and Regenerative Medicine use stem cells to explore a possible treatment for retinitis uh, pigmentosa, a common cause of blindness in India. Uh, instead of genomics and integrative biology uh, used uh, CRISPR to study a possible treatment for beta thalassemia, an inherited blood disorder as well as hemophilia A and uh, hemophilia B. Let us now examine some of the developments uh, in this field in China. In 1993, Chinese Ministry of Public Health uh, released an outline of quality controls for clinical studies of human somatic and gene therapy. In 1999, guiding principles for human gene therapy clinical trials were finalized. In 2001, regulations on the administration of agricultural genetically modified organisms safety was published, uh, which heavily regulates the import and uh, domestic production of genetically modified crops. In 2003, China's Science Ministry bans the implantation of genetically modified embryos for reproductive purposes and prohibits altered embryos uh, developing past 14 days. No punishments are attached to the regulation. Uh, the same year, Ministry of Health and Ministry of Science and Technology jointly developed the ethical principles of research on human embryonic uh, stem cells, uh, which states that embryos derived by genetic modification must 
must not be allowed to develop for more than uh, 14 days and that once they have been used for research they cannot be implanted into humans or other uh, species. In uh, 2003 Chinese State Food and Drug Administration or National Medical uh, Products Administration uh, published guidance for human gene therapy research and its products which outlines requirements uh, for applications of uh, gene therapy uh, clinical study. The document also outlines requirements for quality control and product efficacy and safety tests. In 2007 Ministry of Health uh, released measures for the ethical review of biomedical research involving humans for trial implementation. In 2015 Chinese researchers were the first uh, to edit genes using CRISPR in a, in, a, in a human embryo. A gene associated with a fatal blood disorder was modified but the embryos uh, were not implanted. The editing was not successful in most embryos in the experiment. Uh, we have discussed about the case of He Jiankui who altered the DNA of human embryos yesterday uh, that were carried to term uh, is, uh, is censured by the Guangdong Health Ministry and was fired from the Southern University of Science and Technology and was also later jailed and, and also his collaborators were also uh, punished. In uh, 2020 adoption of new civil code in China which includes personal protections for human genes and stricter regulations for human uh, gene editing was initiated. Uh, in the case of Japan in 2004 uh, it adopted the law concerning the conservation and sustainable use of biological diversity through regulations on the use of living modified organisms. Uh, in 2014 Japanese government adopted accelerated approval system for regenerative medicines including gene therapy and stem cell treatments. The pharmaceuticals, medical devices and other therapeutic products act, PMD act uh, introduced uh, conditional approval uh, which requires only minimal safety and efficacy data. In 2015 the guidelines for clinical research uh, regarding gene therapy which regulates clinical research on gene therapy uh, was uh, passed. In 2017 Consumer Affairs Agency initiated a review of genetic engineering labeling uh, requirements. In 2018 the draft guidelines were issued that allow for gene editing research in human embryos. Gene editing embryos for reproduction uh, was not allowed. Uh, but uh, is not punishable by law. In 2019 advisory panel publishes final report recommending that gene edited plants and food can be sold uh, to consumers without safety evaluations as long as the techniques involved meet certain criteria but the recommendations must, must still be adopted by the uh, MHLW. In 2019 Japanese science ministry allows scientists to grow human animal chimeras, human cells in an animal embryo that are transferred to an animal's uterus uh, reversing an earlier ban on the practice. The goal is to use animals to grow organs that can be transplanted into uh, humans. Uh, in 2020 Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries uh, Animal Products Safety Division released the final guidelines for the handling of gene edited feed and uh, feed additives. Uh, the Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare uh, published the final guideline stating that gene edited plants and food can be sold to consumers without safety evaluations as long as the techniques involved meet certain criteria but developers must send notification uh, to the uh, government. Let us uh, now discuss about some of the developments in the European Union. Uh, uh, in 2019, uh, 14 member states call on the next European uh, Commission uh, to update regulations for gene editing arguing that it could lead to more uh, sustainable agriculture. Uh, Netherlands Commission on Genetic uh, Modification uh, COSM, uh, held international symposium on gene editing of crops uh, including uh, uh, suggestions uh, of uh, a product based uh, regulatory uh, system. Uh, over 100 European research institutes and universities uh, released an open letter uh, calling for the newly elected European Parliament and European Commission to deregulate gene editing techniques to achieve a more sustainable agriculture arguing that existing regulations do not reflect the current state of science. Uh, 
in uh, the same year based on the 2018 ruling by the European Court of Justice, France top administrative court ruled that the French High Council for Biotechnology needs to set up within 6 months a specific list of mutagenesis techniques or methods that will be exempted from GMO restrictions. Uh, EU lawmakers call, uh, called on the EU Commission to push for a global prohibition on the release of gene drive technologies into the wild. Uh, the advisory vote said that the moratorium should also uh, cover uh, field trials. In Africa also we can see various developments uh, taking place uh, from 1998. Uh, uh, through the National Environmental Management Act number 107 which strictly regulated genetically modified organisms with foreign DNA. Uh, in 2009 one Nigeria uh, established National Biotechnology Development Agency to promote commercialize and regulate biotechnology products and they ratified the Cartesian protocol in uh, 2003. And uh, in 2008 South Africa's Consumer Protection Act number 68 of 208 uh, was uh, passed which required GMO levels on food. And uh, 2009 Kenya Biosafety Act was passed which includes clauses on leveling GMOs. And uh, the Senegal Biosafety law passed the same year uh, also outlined the approval process for genetically engineered crops. Uh, in 2013 African science academies in Ethiopia issued uh, a statement supporting biotechnology saying biotechnology enhanced tools and products can play a significant and positive role in meeting Africa's dire need and persistent challenge to break the seemingly perpetual cycle of hunger, malnutrition and underdevelopment. In 2015, Nigeria signed the Biosafety Act regulating the handling and use of genetically engineered crops requiring mandatory leveling of products or ingredients. In 2016, South Africa's Department of Science and Technology commissions an expert report on the regulatory implications of new breeding techniques through animal breeding was not examined. In 2018, Kenya's National Biosafety Authority announced the development of the gra draft guidelines on contained use of transgenic animals. In 2019, Senegal draft a revised biosafety law that could expedite the approval process for certain genetically env engineered products. But it is unclear how long the evaluation and approval process will take until the revised law is adopted uh, regional biosafety uh, law, but it is still undergoing uh, evaluation and approval. In Australia also various developments regarding the regulatory landscape has uh, taken place since 1991 when GM, uh, GM therapeutic goods uh, regulated. Uh, uh, under the Therapeutic Goods Act 1989 come into action. In 2002, Prohibition of Human Cloning for Reproduction Act was passed, bearing all germline gene editing and setting a penalty of 15 years in jail. In 2002, Research Involving Human Embryos Act 2002 was passed, requiring a license for the use of embryos in research. Uh, in 2009, amendments to the Gene Technology Regulations of 2001 were commenced including the requirement of a license for all gene drives to ensure case by case evaluation of risks and tailored risk uh, management. Uh, uh, gene technology regulators uh, conducts a technical review of the gene technology regulations uh, 2001 clarifying the regulatory status of organisms developed using a range of new uh, breeding uh, techniques. In the case of Canada, uh, we can see it has remained committed to the scientific principles laid down in its domestic regulatory framework for plants with novel traits established uh, more than 25 years ago. Uh, it, the policy states that any gene editing technology that creates a novel product is subject to additional regulatory oversight of allergenicity, toxicity and impacts on uh, non-target uh, and, and impacts on non-target organisms. Uh, two products obtained by gene editing have been approved in Canada, non-browning apples and non-dark spots uh, potatoes. The approval was granted after a lengthy evaluation process uh, which determined the changes made to the apples and the potatoes uh, and, and that they did not pose a uh, risk to human health 
uh, then apples and potatoes currently available on the uh, Canadian market. Uh, this is one uh, interesting uh, story about a Penn State developer uh, who developed gene edited mushroom and he was awarded based of what is new award. Uh, Enong Yang, uh, a plant pathologist uh, at Pennsylvania State University uh, in University Park engineered the common white button agaricus uh, bisporous mushroom uh, to resist browning. Uh, these mushrooms, uh, the normal uh, ones, uh, they brown uh, due to the self life, they become brown and uh, they lose the customer's uh, choice and they are, they sell at a lower price. So, by solving this browning problem, uh, the quality uh, of the product is uh, sustained and so is the income uh, from selling these mushrooms. Uh, these browning was stopped by targeting uh, the family of genes that encodes uh, polyphenol oxidases, uh, the enzyme which causes the browning. Uh, Young deleted uh, a handful of uh, base pairs in the mushroom's genome and uh, knocked out one of the six uh, uh, polyphenol oxidase genes, uh, reducing the enzyme's activity by uh, 30 percent. However, this uh, is a very interesting case in terms of regulatory uh, issues. Uh, this particular CRISPR edited mushroom escaped uh, the US uh, regulatory framework. Uh, the mushroom is one of uh, about 30 genetically modified organisms uh, which could uh, sidestep the USDA regulatory system uh, in the uh, past uh, decade uh, in uh, or 5 years. In each case, the agency's animal and plant health inspection service has said that the organisms uh, which are mostly plants do not qualify as something the agency must regulate uh, as per the existing uh, guidelines and norms. Uh, once a crop uh, passes the USD reviews, it may still undergo a voluntary review by the US Food and uh, Drug Administration however. Several of the plants that bypassed the USDA were made using gene editing techniques such as the, as the jink finger nucleus and uh, talon. Uh, but until now, it was not clear whether the USDA would give the same uh, pass to organisms engineered with science uh, hottest new tool uh, CRISPR-Cas9 until these CRISPR edited mushroom make its way uh, to the supermarket shelves. So, with this we come to end of this uh, lecture under module uh, 12. These are some of the uh, references uh, which were used for preparing this lecture. Uh, those who are interested kindly refer to these original articles for any of the points or concepts uh, where uh, you may require uh, little additional explanations or understanding. Uh, thank you for your uh, patient uh, hearing. Mm -hmm.